It's Wednesday, April the 7th, and you're tuned in to the Tanabee Podcast. I'm Vince. I'm Anthony. And this is the Geek Chic Culture Show, where we talk about all the cool things in the whole wide world. Whoa, 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 whoa. I think last time we recorded, it was March 31st. Therefore, we missed April Fool's. Did you see any good April did Fool's it? jokes? I thought, we, I thought we were on... Was that last week we did Thursday or the week before we did Thursday? The week Thursday? before we did Thursday. Okay. Then yeah, we missed April Fool's. Yeah, we did. Not that I saw anything worth talking about for April Fool's. Oh, I definitely have something worth talking about. Oh, really? Let me tell you about jerking off the audio, baby. What? So the 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 mad lads over at Faku, the premium hentai subscription service. Okay. They've teamed up tell me more. with the likes of Joey the Anime Man. C Dog VA. He's my favorite. The Queen of Degeneracy, Sid Snap. Okay. And Gigook, anime video essay extraordinaire man. Wow. To hire them as voice actors to Whoa. read audio porn. Wow. So now you can listen to V Dog VA, C Dog VA, just read Dojinshi's and you could jerk off the audio porn. I hope it's real. I also hope it's real. That's fucking fantastic. I was April Fool, so I just took it as whatever. You just took it, eh? I was like, yeah, I just took it, baby. You know (laughs) know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Uh, So I was like, yeah, all right, I'll take that shit as real, whatever. Okay. That's cool. But it looks hilarious. That's cool. Near Automata had a trailer where they marketed the game as like an Animal Crossing Mm -hmm. uh, replacement. And I'm like, that's just evil. Because I know how that game goes. Yeah. That's just me. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I don't really remember too much else. Yeah, like I um the only thing I saw was on my cycling thing, Zwift. Mm-hmm. Like you have an avatar who rides a bike, yeah. and for on April Fools, they switched everybody and put them on like giant oversized tricycles. Nice. And I was just like, okay. This is an improvement. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't know what to think of it. I was like, oh. I alright, cool. And like that's all I took from him. Like, uh, I guess I guess that's a thing. Sure. Do you think that like internet culture over the years has now ruined April Fools? Kind of, cause like half the time I'm questioning if it's real. Like I just don't believe anything is real on the internet. Yeah. It's tough. It's tough like that. And then when you get to a day where you're like, oh, now extra things aren't real, then it's like, okay, now I definitely yeah. know not to. But th- yeah, but then it's like the things that you absolutely are positively sure are not real mm-hmm. are always the real ones. Yeah. And it's like, yeah. so, I don't know. Um, cool. Cool, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Sweet. Well, today's April 7th, and we got some things to talk about. I think we got some questions. Yeah, we got a question to chew on. Balchu writes in, Though the Mario franchise is seemingly marketed towards children, is it indeed for children? What are other franchises that reside within the same pocket? Maybe Sonic? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go outside of video games, Uh-oh. and I'm just gonna say like the whole Ariana Grande market, just everyone who loves her music, yeah. like the amount of single digit year olds who are just yeah. like, oh my god, switching my positions for you, and I'm like, yeah, <laughs> like yeah. what the fuck is going on? Yeah, yeah, it's good, right? And uh, I would still say Mario's for children. Like I don't know, like there's like cartoon violence and stuff, but. It's nothing worse than like a Looney Tunes or like a Ben 10, stuff like that. Yeah. Right? It's all very comical. When you step on a Goomba, they just uh, go into a puff of smoke. There's never really anything in there that's just like, Mario has a gun now. <laughs> <laughs> Although he should. You know. <laughs> he should. Yeah. The closest thing is Luigi with the vacuum. No, the closest thing is in Sunshine. What was it? Oh, the, the water pack? Yeah. Yeah, but that game sucks. Whoa! <laughs> the sunshine ain't good. So sunshine's cool. It's cool. I will say it is the like the most experimental Mario. Mm. They just did not, they did not hit it mm. right. Like I would say a better experimental Mario is Galaxy. Mm. Maybe. But yeah, I don't. Why Mario would, is Mario a kids game? Yeah, sure. Yeah, why would you say Mario's not a kids game? Sure, it's towards. Yeah, that's not to say. It can't be difficult or have the nuances or complexity of a more advanced game. Yeah. But I would say it's generally a children's game. Yeah, and I would say, like, the best children's content is usually that stuff that, like, pushes them to 
learn something more complicated. Yeah. Right. Whether it be a game with certain mechanics, like the fucking Super Mario Odyssey mechanics are insane. Yeah. Like jump off my hat, switch into another thing. Like, yeah. All these long jumps and wall jumps and shit that you can do. Like it really opens your imagination as a kid, but also like not everything has to be fucking. What's that one YouTube channel? Like Coco Melon. I'm not familiar. It's a uh, PewDiePie does a does like a parody of his of the Coco Melon opening, but it's just like a four kids YouTube channel that is just like the most dumbed down shit. Oh really? Yeah, that's I think that's where like Baby Shark came from. Oh, and stuff like that. Like not everything has to be insanely simple for it to be classified as. Children, I see what you're I saying. Think so. Okay. Yeah, okay. Right. Fair enough. Yeah. I don't know. I've always been of the like having worked with children. I am been of the mindset that like we don't give kids enough credit for like the things they can do and learn at a very young age uh i don't know i, I don't know if i would agree with that statement i think we yeah. all i i think everyone knows that kids learn fast and that they can just absorb information rapidly yeah right and i, I don't know but i just feel like when people think of kids content like coming at it from adult perspective sometimes and it's just like okay it's got to be like really easy and super simple it's like no it does not yeah like you can give them really complex situations and they'll figure it out. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would say and his second question is like, what are other franchises that reside in the same pocket? I would say everything Nintendo puts out is, is aimed for children. Yeah, yeah, pretty much their whole line. You know, like you think of Pokemon. Yeah, that's for children. Po- man, the fact that I learned how to play Pokemon as a young kid. Yeah, that's great. Like that. That's not a. That's not a simple game. Like you got different elements. You catch all these Pokemon. They have stack growths. Yeah. Visible about... stats. Yeah, you gotta talk about like <laughs> fucking different move sets that are. Yeah, you know, as a kid, I went on IRCs looking at EV charts. Do you remember? Yeah, oh, you gotta <laughs> fight all those tentacruels, baby. They give you the best uh, ones. Oh man, the whole thing about like, okay, what you gotta really do is you gotta talk to this one guy twice. Yeah. Say no twice, and then learn how to catch a Pokemon again. Yeah. And then you gotta go to that fucking uh, Cinnabar, Cinnabar Island, go up and down the SSN or whatever, yeah. and like do some bullshit. Yeah. Yeah, that's some. Like, there's some wild shit in those games. Yeah. Uh, and, and they're not simple. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, no, I think, yeah. Anything else that, I mean, like, every every video game or every major title publisher has that kind of content. Like, yeah. for a while, Sony had the Sly Cooper series. I uh, think most recently is Ubisoft's Phoenix Rising. Like, yeah, is, yeah, that, that, that Zelda clone. The yeah. Zelda clone, and, like, yeah. that's totally going for that same market. Yeah. Um, uh... All that stuff. I would even go as far as to say, like, the recent Transformers games are for kids. Like, uh... Devastation? The the Platinum Games one? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I could say that. That's like a super baby's first character action game. Yeah. Yeah, right? like, it's very... Definitely a kid's game. Yeah. I would say. I would hope so. It's fucking Transformers. Yeah, like, and I would say that with all the Oh, sorry, sorry. Games. I don't want to upset your toy fans. <laughs> they're oh. not toys. Oh, I don't think they're listening to they're this. They're collectibles. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I definitely feel like that is. I think it's pretty obvious which one are kids' games. You know, Rocket League is a kids' game. Yeah, and that has, like, so much depth. Have you seen modern day Rocket League? Yeah. Like, these kids are fucking, like, walking on ceilings and shit. Yeah. Fortnite, I would say, is the one, uh, I don't know, like, because if Fortnite didn't have that art style, would I think it's a kid's game? I guess, like, I, I was going to make the comparison to, like, us playing Call of Duty. Yeah. Like, you remember, like, Call of Duty 3, and it's, like, yeah. World War II shit? And yeah. That's more, I, I, I guess it's still not a kid's game, but yeah. I think that's an oversight of parents not knowing what, like, games are. Yeah. Like, they definitely wouldn't let me watch Saving Private Ryan at that age, mm-hmm. but they would let me play call of duty yeah it's gonna just... nuke everybody yeah <laughs> <laughs> mission fail we'll get them next time yeah uh so yeah like my parents didn't know grand theft auto 3 was like hooker murder simulator until it was too late that's true right yeah until it was too late <laughs> wow <laughs> your poor parents yeah so there you go there's a lot of games that we all enjoy that are in fact kids games yeah i i, I don't know what i really classify as a as a kid's game to be honest. I mean, I guess like those old school, you know, Hannah Montana, Lizzie McGuire. Those are definitely yeah. kids, kids games. Those are kids. It's like, was it Lizzie McGuire for the Game Boy Advance? Yeah, like yeah. that that's stuff. Imagine Babies. Yeah. Like all that's the Imagines. Did you know that like Ubisoft made hella money off that series? Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I was reading about that like a couple months ago and it's just like, yeah, they released all those games to like fund Assassin's Creed. 
<laughs> yeah, like the big games that we talk about here on this podcast are the ones that like all our mutuals talk about. They yeah. are not the cash cows. Yeah, yeah, not even close. Yeah, so it's sports and the kids games. Those are the ones that bring in the dollars. And I think now it's probably like the like it'd be mobile games, like different gotcha games, like Raid Shadow Legends, right, and shit like that. Like those would I would probably classify as kids games now for sure. Sure. Because you look at that shit and you're like, oh, it's super simple. Here's a bunch of like really. Yeah. Uh, just pay two dollars and get mechanics. Right. And, yeah, and for be sure. Really powerful. So, mm-hmm. yeah, there you go. Those are some uh, kitty games. Yeah. It'd be it'd be interesting to like think more about like what would classify as a kid's game. But I think we went through it. Mm-hmm. All right. Next up, uh, there's a Mac attack from Brian Mac. So subject line peer pressure. OK. Hello, nerds. What are some games that you initially did not have interest in, but your friends convinced you to play them and you ended up liking them? For me, in recent time, is Genshin Impact after my wife got me two five-star characters from free initial summons. That's... Come on. Whoa, buddy. Whoa. whoa. You're only, you only like it because you got lucky. Whoa, man. Don't let her talk to you like that. Don't let her, like... <laughs> How are you going to let her do you like that, bro? Dude, you got to show her who wears the pants. Um, all of my examples are like games that are fucking terrible. Okay. Right? Like there's a Japanese PS2 game called, uh, it was created by Enix before they were Square Enix. Yeah. (laughs) And it's called Super Galdelic Hour. Oh, that is bad. Okay. It's about, uh, (laughs) it's about three animals or four animals who get turned into ladies. Yeah. And then you play Mario Party mini games. And the whole theme is like 70s disco mm. bullshit. It's real bad. Mm. It's real bad. Mm. But I was like, this is a this is a fun, real bad mm. game. <laughs> and like shit like that. Uh, my situation's been mostly been like, I am usually on top of the industry. And I was the one recommending stuff to other people. Uh. So, like, I think maybe you probably pushed me. Mm-hmm. more so to play like some stuff like mass effect mm-hmm. um but I, I other than you i can't really think of someone who was like you gotta play this game and then i really enjoyed it mm-hmm. usually i'm already like i played that game or i tried it or i'll, I'll yeah. give it another chance at least yeah. mine's pretty easy it wasn't by it wasn't one single person it was actually a group of people when i used to work at the movie theaters around 2005 2007 uh i was coming off the playstation 2 yeah i uh, had the 3 i think at the time and the psp whatever yeah so yeah like that was like the camp i had nestled into but everyone at the theaters had a 360 oh um. and, and up to this point i had i had yet to play halo right and so like they're just like do it do it do it play do halo. it play with us don't you want to play with us <laughs> and if it weren't for them i wouldn't have played i wouldn't have bought the 360 because i bought the 360 they gave me gears of war they gave me halo two because mm-hmm. you could still play multiplayer on it that way and then at that point i, I got into like mass effect because it was at that time still exclusive i think to the 360 um and bioshock oh, bioshock's such a good game so like all like the initial like 2005 2006 2007 window of 360 exclusive games yeah are probably everything that i was kind of like convinced that i need to play I bought I bought Bioshock the original on PC. Yeah, and my PC could could run. not handle I didn't it. Think so. That's like a I turned sick off looking game. every single fucking effect. Yeah, and I was just like, hell yeah, this game's awesome at 15 frames, <laughs> and I beat the game. I didn't Whoa. give a shit. <laughs> Whoa, because I remember playing that game the first time in 360. I'm like. This looks amazing. And then you see like the videos from the PC version yeah. and you're like, holy shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. So, uh, yeah, like I would say that. Um, yeah, but I don't know. Like, I guess otherwise everything else I've, I'm, I've pretty been pretty much been like set in my ways or like my own sort of mentality or thinking. I can't remember if I got destiny because like I wanted to believe in destiny or like, I got Destiny because I wanted something good to play on the PS4. I was like, I bought the Destiny bundle because this game is going to be good. And then, like, as I'm playing it, I'm like, it's good, right? It's good, right? And then you guys stopped playing. And I'm like, it's not that good anymore. Yeah, it's like, I, I can't remember if I bought that because, like, I wanted to buy it. 
or because like everyone else is buying it i can't remember but man i still remember buying that ps4 too mm. so i was outside the best buy at midnight wow. and i parked like away from the best buy and so no one would park beside me and then someone parked beside me. Wow. And I was like, dude, what the fuck? <laughs> like, you have the whole parking lot. Yes, I don't know why some people like doing that. Why do they do that? I think it's because, like, some people can't park without a reference. I get That's weird. That or, like, they don't feel comfortable by themselves. Like, it's just, like, uh, some people feel more comfortable in a crowd. Yeah, I guess. But also, like, you parking your car beside mine just gives a potential car thief a hiding spot. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> it does, yeah. Right? Yeah. Like- I just think it's weird when they acknowledge that you're in the car and they still decide to do it anyway. Yeah, or you give them the look. And yeah, you're like, and you're what like, are you doing? Yeah. And they're still like, boop, boop. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's like, what the hell? Um, but yeah, no, I, uh, I I can't think of much. I guess I guess Monster Hunter, but we said that last time. Yeah, that that's kind of a that's a boring answer. Yeah, Monster Hunter is, is all Blavin's fault, and. Peer pressure games. Probably King of Fighters. Really? Yeah. I, I I was thinking about it, and then my friend Christian was like, I'll play it with you. And I was like, okay, cool. Okay. And then, like, I booted it up again last night, because they're having a Seven Deadly Sins crossover. And I'm like, oh, I'm back in it. Like, <laughs> Damn. Yeah. <laughs> Just like that, huh? Just like that. Wow. Well, I've been playing for a while. Like, So I learned that if you don't play for a month, you get all the welcome back rewards. So you get a bunch of bonus shit. Yeah, mm. I don't know. There's a, there's a couple of things, but mm. It, mm. I, I wouldn't say it's it's. I, I would say it's very rarely something I didn't even know existed, mm-hmm. and then was like, play this game, man. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Let me tell you about Wu Tang Shaolin style. Wu Tang <laughs> Shaolin style for the PS One. I <laughs> I can I can dig it. Yeah, Wu Tang Clan Smash Bros game. <laughs> okay. With fatalities. She. <laughs> Um, Let me cool. tell you about irritating stick. Huh. Wow, <laughs> very very cool. All right, well I guess that's that. So let's talk about some stuff, some picks, some picks, some weeks. Yeah. All right, I got some. I got some picks. Cool. Um, Twitch is now awesome. No. Oh. Okay. Of course not. Of course not. The hot tub meta is going on still in in uh the hot tub meta. You don't know about the hot tub meta. Fill me in. So the every streamer, gender, type, they all have a meta, right? And that's how you farm the most viewers. So the current female meta is the hot tub meta. Like, go in the hot tub. Like, you have a hot tub. In most cases, you don't even have a hot tub. It's just an inflatable pool. <laughs> you know? And then because you're in a, a watery area, you are then within the TOS to wear a bikini... And then you farm subs because whenever you donate, they'll yep. write the sub username on their body. With what? Like a marker or some shit, like a washable okay. marker. Okay. Uh, and then always, never, not, not does this happen, is that like the whiteboard or the pen that they need to write the sub is like behind the pool. So you have to like reach over and bend over for the hot tub. Yeah, okay. For You got to get those stuff. So the new... Uh, the they're they're uh they've they've gone away from the Lord's light, <laughs> let's say. Um, but this one actually doesn't actually have anything to do with that. Uh, they're now trying to outsource a, a a third party company to investigate misconduct for Twitch, em, not employees, but Twitch streamers who do something outside of Twitch. What do you mean? So if you break Twitch TOS. And you're not on Twitch, like just in your daily life, there's a possibility that they could punish you. What? Yeah. They so the what they do, they have a list of um activities that could possibly get you uh banned. And and it's all very, very severe. So deadly violence, extreme violence. Okay, that's terrorist activities. Okay. Explicit or credible threats of mass violence. Okay. Uh, leadership of um, being in a known hate group, uh, carrying out or deliberately acting as an accomplice to non-consensual activities, um, mm. explicit or credible threats against Twitch or 
or including Twitch staff. Interesting. Like, so it's all very extreme behavior and it all makes sense. But as usual, people think Twitch is, Twitch is like just dog shit at running their company. So they're worried that even though these are so extreme and it seems very narrow, they have had a precedent of just using a TOS and being using it for their own will and whatever in the past to just like, oh yeah, this counts as sexual misconduct. And it's Fair like, enough. dude, I was in a, I was in a bikini. Like, what do you want from I me? I got it. Okay. Right? Okay. So that's, that's the next thing that's going around on Twitch. And it's kind of, I feel like everything Twitch does now is, is big news just because they are so massive within the yeah. gaming sphere. So we'll see how this goes. It'll be something to, to keep an eye on. I think, yes, yeah, something's going to happen there, but just a, story the other one is uh remember loot boxes yeah remember how countries don't like loot boxes yeah well brazil really hates loot boxes oh they extra hate loot boxes why uh so brazil has uh launched a inquiry to ban loot boxes what they want is to create a law where they believe that loot boxes are akin to gambling. You're training children to gamble. And they want to charge companies $700,000 a day. Whoa. If they have loot boxes in their game Whoa. that are accessible within Brazil. Whoa. <laughs> $700,000 a day. Uh. Should the ban be approved, uh... Brazil is considering inducing indu introducing fines for companies and loot boxes up to yeah 4 million Brazilian dollars or 700,000 <sighs> okay. American dollars. Okay, okay. This <clears throat> is coming hot off the heels of uh loot boxes in the UK. There was a, a UK study that has apparently linked that structurally and psycholo psychologically Loot boxes are akin to gambling. Well, okay, fair enough. So Europe, South America, they're going hard in the paint Yeah. when it comes to getting rid of loot boxes. Uh, this has been a hot topic for years. We've I've covered it, or we've covered it for a while now. Yeah. And this is like one of those things where like when I mentioned, I think I also mentioned on the podcast, the Australian legislation for, for news, right? Where they're trying to charge Facebook and Google for Australian news or whatever. Yes. This is like one of those things where it's like, okay, the digital economy is now gaining a, uh, attention from world governments. Yeah. And these types of legislations have the potential to change the landscape of uh, digital business. Like, as we know it, at least. So these are, are things where, like, even though uh, Brazil is just thinking about the passing the legislation or the law and they haven't actually done it, yeah. it's still something to keep track of because... Huh think of things like gotcha games yeah like that's their whole business model <laughs> like overwatch you buy the game right that's one that's one avenue of revenue mm. uh but loot boxes are another thing but the other like gotcha games are just it's free and then give us money for boxes yeah right so like what are you gonna, how it works yeah what are you gonna do there you just lose a whole country of revenue it's kind of insane so we'll we'll, we'll see how that goes uh, another one was, oh, a new, it, a new uh, sealed Super Mario Bros. has been sold on the, the auction market. Uh, some dude found a sealed NES cartridge uh, still in the shrink wrap. I want you to guess, how much did Super Mario Bros. original for the NES sell on auction? Hmm. It's just a regular copy of the game. It's uh, it was rated at nine point six mint, so A plus rating. So this thing is basically off the shelf mint. Okay. Um, you t how much did the previous one sell for? So the last thing that sold at Heritage Auctions was last year. We talked about it, it but it wasn't a game. It was the sony nintendo or the sorry the nintendo playstation oh okay. and that sold for about three hundred and sixty thousand. and this is a game? and then even further back there was a copy of super mario 3 sealed that sold for a hundred and fifty six thousand. and this is a copy of the original super mario Bros. The original super mario bros three and then a hundred five hundred thousand six hundred and sixty 
thousand US dollars, the highest price ever for a video game period. Wow. Uh so yeah, you video game collectors out there. This nostalgia's coming again. It's coming back around. That's uh, wild. It's definitely something me and my my friends have been talking about of like, well, I guess I'm never selling anything or opening anything if it's still sealed. Uh this is uh just this is like kind of unprecedented. It's kind of crazy what these like deep pocket collectors are now paying for mm. because they're like that's 660k. That's not actual price, right? That's not actual value. That's speculative value. Yeah. Right. And, but yeah. the thing is, is like now that they've paid for it, they've sent the be- the they've set the benchmark for mm-hmm. what people are expected to pay for yep. these type of things. Yep. So rare video games, man, they're they're a thing. And it's kind of crazy. Wow. Uh, over in China, the ah. biggest internet cheating ring in the world has been busted. Uh, there was a Chinese website that was dedicated to creating cheats for popular cheats? games. Cheats? Okay. Uh, Call of Duty Mobile, Overwatch, that kind of stuff. And yeah. what you would do is that you pay a subscription for service starting from like $10 a day to $2, $200 a month. Wow. Uh, and Tencent teamed up with the Chinese police to do basically a raid on this place. The, the estimated revenue uh, that this organization made was around $76 million in cheat revenue, and they seized around $48, $46 million of assets, wow. including like luxury sports cars and shit that they just wow. had lined up in their garage for funsies. What's he doing? You have money. I guess so. Yeah, you just buy shit, right? Put that shit into assets. Um, yeah, the Kushan police found, force found and destroyed seventeen cheats and arrested ten people in connection with the ring. Wow. So, the ring. The ring, baby. This seems like a Chinese exclusive news story. Like I don't see this shit happening in North America, but you never know. Yeah, you never know. And this is this is a, a news just because. Yeah, like with tournaments getting bigger and bigger prize pools like this is kind of keeping the quote-unquote sport fair right there is a brand new esports economy south korea was ahead of the game but like they know what's up worlds is league of legends world is huge yeah uh starcraft like if you're a starcraft player you're basically a nascar driver with all your fucking sponsorships pretty much so keeping everything level is is uh good for business and act- and good for the country where the business is being done. So, mm-hmm. It's pretty sweet. Remember when we we're talking about uh Tiger Woods signed up with uh Golf 2K? Yeah. Right? And they're like, "Yo, Tiger Woods is back. He's going to help us make a golf game." EA Sports clapping back. They have uh bought the Masters. You know, the, oh, the wow. PGA Tour Masters. Yeah. They now have exclusive rights to the Masters for their golf game. Really? Exclusive. Hmm. So they're like, listen, our golf games have sucked dick. But fuck you if you think you're going to be able to do anything with uh, any of the licensed products. So I think at this point now, all four majors, all four PGA majors are exclusive to EA. Wow. Which will be, which will be interesting. It'll be like, I love golf games, but like, to me, it's is is the gameplay fun like i don't care if the masters is in it mm. you can just have a tournament mode right so like other than that like who cares but uh this will be interesting to see like if 2k comes out with like a better golf game with tiger woods or if really the names of the tournaments matter to players they do they do <laughs> they do they definitely do. they absolutely do <laughs> they shouldn't <laughs> but they do no they do they should matter. That's why you're. That's why you're following. I guess. What else is going on? Uh, remember E3? Oh yeah, it's coming back this year. What are you talking about? June, baby. What are you talking about? All virtual events. Guess who's back? Xbox. Shady. No, Slim Shady. <laughs> yes, who's back? So Nintendo, Xbox, Capcom, and Ubisoft have. Uh, Told, said that they are going to appear at this all virtual event at E3. Hey, Nintendo, Ubisoft, Xbox. Yeah. Okay. And Capcom. Okay. Uh, Sony seems like it's still they're still doing their own thing. Okay. But 
we all thought E three was dead. I think this is probably the last chance that E three has to prove itself to be alive and be relevant. Okay. But I don't know. I I feel like over the past ten years, E three has just been like, oh, E three's dead. E three's alive. E <laughs> three's dead. They've resurrected from the grave, right? Yeah. So I don't know. I don't think E three's ever gonna go away. Yeah. I think it's too ingrained in gamer culture. It'll for... exist in some form or another. Yeah. Exactly. Bring back Kensha Hall, motherfucker. Come on. <laughs> uh, Sega came out with Virtual Fighter announcement. Remember that Virtual Fighter X esports thing that they had a while ago? No. No? Okay, no. well, they had like a little teaser where it was like Sega is getting into the esports game and they had like Virtual Fighter X esports. Okay. Do you know what that Virtual Fighter game is now? Is it a mobile game? No, it's it's just Virtual Fighter Five again. Oh, but it's so they're re- uh, they're releasing Virtual Fighter Five Ultimate Showdown. Oh, instead of Final Showdown, the ten year old Virtual Fighter game is being remade uh, as a focus as testing the waters into the esports game. So I'm I'm not surprised it's not a new game. I'm still disappointed, but that sounds like shit. Having Virtual Fighter on a modern console that's not inside yakuza Mm -hmm. is pretty great okay so i'm pretty excited for that i want to see akira start punching shit and doing whatever uh keeping on fighting games the street fighter 5 had their updates they had this summer or spring update Mm. Uh, they showed off oro Oro, Oro, he's got a hawaiian shirt yeah he has a turtle he's looking pretty cool they showed off rose they gave her the like tarot card changing yep so you can buff yourself and debuff your opponent mm-hmm. they give you the alpha is the a groove from snk yeah. or the the alpha series and you just create a clone of yourself to do insane combos mm-hmm. and she looks crazy but i think the one that matters is akira from rival school that's baby. the only one that matters holy shit akira looks cool she is still in development i think she's the last character for this yeah, season she's past. the final character but she looks so cool yeah uh, and they keep a lot of rival schools mechanics so they have a launcher button mm-hmm. in street fighter like straight up air combos going mm-hmm. on in street fighter 5 it looks mm-hmm. so cool you summon your brother mm-hmm. definitely check out the the i think it was about a 30 minute in total video they had about the uh, about the updates you can skip all the concerts they had who cares <laughs> but there's a lot of cool gameplay coming out of street fighter and yeah, I love that they're in a position where they're just like, yeah, we'll just bring out Oro. <laughs> like, the only other one I would have been crazy if they're like, hey, yeah, here's here's Edgy Guile. Here's Remy from 3. You can just go for it. Oh, is he not in the game? No, he's it's not. It's just Nash. Nash and Guile, but no Remy. Charlie? I guess, yeah, Charlie is Nash. Okay. Right? Yeah. Is, or, like, uh... or if you want to go by Street Fighter movie canon, Charlie is Blanca. Oh, that's right. Right? Oh, yeah. Okay, for it's right. <laughs> if you want to go Rod Von... Which, not Jean-Claude Van Damme. That's the... That's a wrestler. No, that's Jean-Claude Van Damme. Wait, who's the wrestler then? Rod Van Damme. Yes. Yeah. So, Jean, if you want to go Jean-Claude Van Damme lore, yeah. then Charlie is Blanca. Okay. Right? Okay. Wait, wasn't Charlie or whatever... Didn't he get, like, a half-robot? In Street Fighter Five, yeah, yeah, he was like tested on through Shadowloo okay. or whatever, yeah, and now he's like a zombie face. Yeah, why do I know that? That's so stupid. Because it's rad. It's so sick. What <laughs> no. are you talking about? I never even played Street Fighter Five. Exactly. That's how cool it is. Okay. Uh, a quick one is uh Mario ninety or Tetris ninety nine. Remember that? Yeah. Competitive Tetris. Yo, what about competitive Pac Man? No. Pac-Man 99, baby. I'm uh, I must say no to that. Yeah, one. I'm also going to say no to that. I just thought that was funny. <laughs> no. Uh, and then probably, you know what? This is the biggest announcement of the week. Oh, really? The biggest announcement of the week. Okay. JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, baby. Oh, fuck. Part 6, Stone Ocean getting animated official. No more fucking Rohan side stories. None of this bullshit. Straight up Stone Ocean Part 6. Coming in hot. All right. All they had a right. whole event. They uh, it, they had this really cute event with all the main character VAs, and they like all like welcomed her to the JoJo family. Oh really? And, like she like started crying or whatever. It was really cute. Um, but JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part Six 
is set in 2011, set in Florida around Cape Canaveral. And the main character is Jolene Cujo, who was the daughter of Jotaro Cujo from part three. Oh, she has a name. Yeah. You don't know Jolene? No. Jolene Cujo? No. Uh, named after the Dolly Parton song Jolene, I believe. Uh, of course. Uh, yeah, I know that. I knew that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it takes place in an all female prison. Hell yeah. Hell I guess. yeah. And so yeah. this is. This was Orange is the New Black before Orange is the New Black. Right, right, right. right. And uh, to me, part six is probably... Jesus. The wild... No, that's part seven. Oh. <laughs> part... That's part seven where you got to find Jesus Christ Superstar. <laughs> and dinosaur. And... Dinosaur Dio. Uh, part six is probably the wildest. Um, I'd, I'd Like part five I love because it's Italy and dumb. Yeah. But part six, some of the stands, he just kind of goes off the rails with this shit. Uh, we'll get. I can't wait to see just dumb stands like Jailhouse Lock. Yeah, which is a reference to the Elvis Presley song Jailhouse Rock. Would know. You would know. You should know. That's what I'm gonna say. Would you know. should know. Uh, or Limp Biscuit. You have a song? No, I think he has a power called Nookie. Oh, oh, okay. <laughs> uh, but Limp Biscuit is a stand, and well, all right then. It is probably the dumbest stand in the whole series. Sounds gouda. It's fan fucking tastic. Wow. Uh, yeah. So watch out for Jolene Cujo and her stand Stone Free coming to an anime streaming service near you. Stone Free. Stone Free. Okay. Which oh. is obviously a reference to the Jimi Hendrix song by the same name. Great. <laughs> Honestly, I think half the reason I stuck with JoJo for so long is that I loved all the musical references. And I'm like, I know uh, that one, I know that one, I know that one. I'm just flexing my music knowledge. Great. It's great. It's fantastic. I have no response to that. Part, listen, we're going to watch it. No, we're not. We watched part five. Yeah, and there is no follow-up. No, I know what's going to happen. What? You're going to be like, Anthony, I'm in the mood for an anime club. And you're going to forget. No, I'm going to say, I'm in the mood for an anime club, and I've already picked the anime. No, and you forgot. We <laughs> yeah. both have to pick the anime. We both have no, to pick it. No, no. You're going to forget. Gonna forget. Gonna well, here's forget. the thing. I'm going to declare anime club when it's not airing. Well, you don't, you're not going to remember when it's airing. <laughs> I know it's in production, so that means not anytime soon. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, look out for Jolene Cujo. Great. She's hot. She's gonna be hot. Cool. I think you'd like her as a main character. Maybe. Tough girl. Probably. You probably would. But we'll never know. We will know. <laughs> One day. No. When no. we watch Code Geass <laughs> 3. <laughs> <laughs> nope. No thank you. Alright, what do you got? Uh, my picks are relatively short. We'll do some trailers for pop culture's sake. I swear to God, if you don't talk about kung fu i'm gonna lose it i have to talk about kung fu right. don't worry <laughs> don't worry uh but first loki this looks fucking cool loki was the only it's, it's on disney plus it's a it's a series about loki you know the other son of asgard the coolest son of asgard and when disney plus streaming service was announced and they had all those different shows loki was the only one i wanted to watch yep and uh, it's coming june 11th so i still got time to, to finish up whatever the hell else i'm doing before mm -hmm. it comes out yeah but uh, I think this trailer looks weird and neat, and I will probably sub to Disney Plus for it. All of these, like, Disney Plus TV originals, I'm going to say other than Winter Soldier and Falcon. There's only two, then. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> the two look really cool. Uh, WandaVision and Loki, they seem like they're just, like, playing around with the Marvel Universe in the way I kind of wanted them to in the movies. Yeah, but what, do you, what did you expect? A TV show. They have the time to do yeah. it. You can't do that in a movie. I want five-hour movies. No, you don't. Yes, I do. No, you don't. I want Lord of the Rings extended <clears> cut. <throat> don't lie. You don't. I know you don't. I do. You don't have the attention span for a five-hour movie. What are you talking about? <laughs> I've watched every single Lord of the Rings movie on extended. Yeah? Like you just sat there and watched it? Yes. No, you didn't. I did. Well, how old are you? I When they came out. Exactly. And I did it. I, I challenge you to do that now without picking up your phone or opening up your laptop. But I watched it. No, oh, no, yeah. no, no. I, watched I it. challenge you to do it now. There's no way. Be locked into a there theater. is no Fast way. Fast nine. There's five no hours. Way. That's only a two-hour movie. Five hours. 
There's no way. If Fast 10 isn't 10 hours, I'm going to lose it. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, buddy. Okay. Um, yeah, so that, that that was that trailer. Uh, we got another trailer for The Black Widow coming theaters July 7th. I swear to God that came out already. No. I don't know. I'm pretty sure it didn't. Mm. I don't know. I swore it came out. Maybe it did. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe it's going to re-release. Maybe. I think it was supposed to come out, but then like... Can COVID happen? Yeah. Mm. COVID happened again? Something and like that. And it keeps that. going? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but you, uh, there was another one. Mortal Kombat had another trailer. Mm-hmm looks like a cool movie i think this looks great <clears throat> yeah it did you know what i'll check it out listen we checked out the monster hunter movie we have to check this movie out <laughs> the difference is i'm not a fan of mortal kombat like at all really mm-hmm. like not even like two no you want to uppercut fools? like i'll totally make growing up being like oh yeah the ninja dude the red yeah. one or the blue one yo, and the yo, yellow one. Oh, ice yo shit. that one's green hell yeah look at shoes ass and then i realized that i you know the Power Rangers exist. I will say that the like Mortal Kombat in general usually isn't so great. Oh but wow! The story from nine onwards has been fantastic. Yeah, I think like I I think for me it was too late. Like I just been like ingrained with knowing that Mortal Kombat is bad. You know what? That's probably a game I was peer pressured into playing. Mortal Kombat. One of my friends from Vancouver was like, Anthony, you have to play Mortal Kombat nine. I'm like, yeah, but I don't like like push hold the button. No, 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 no. Just play the story. Yeah. And it was on sale for like 10 bucks, so I bought it. And I was mm. like, holy shit, that's good. Yeah. That's a good-ass game. Yeah. Well, okay. It made me play Injustice. Whoa. Okay. Well, there you go. Space Treadmill. The Flash, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, Mortal Kombat trailer. It was pretty cool. The other thing was uh, you alluded to earlier, but <clears throat> it was the trailer that caught me off guard this, this week. This is the best trailer all week. CW. Always on, on the... Um, on the... Uh, what is it? What's the word I'm looking for? They're always on the, the cutting edge. The cutting edge of ideas, and they just know. They know it. And they know it. And you know what, like, what other shows have they brought out uh, that just, you know, the bleed? Archie. Archie. 90210. 90210. Look at these guys. The Vampire Diaries. This this track record. <clears throat> Mwah, chef's kiss over here of television. And uh, lately, you know, we've got all that, you know, stop the Asian hate. So what does CW do? Hell yeah. We make an all Asian show. Asian represent. Actually, it's not all Asian. There's some white dudes in there. Yeah, they're the villains. There's a black guy who's a bad guy. The villains. Yeah. <laughs> in true Asian form. Hell yeah. Uh, it's about some girl. <clears throat> she comes from China. She knows Kung Fu. Yeah. She trained deep in the Chinese mountains. Yeah, but now she's back in America. Yeah. With her friends. Living that go. modern day life. So what you been doing? Beating up bad guys. Hell yeah. And she literally is just beating up bad guys. I don't know. We don't know why she's beating up bad guys. She just seems like some some 20-year-old chick who's just like, I'm going to beat up bad guys. Yeah, they're bad. So they must be beaten up. She meets another dude. That is what my Sifu told me. Yeah. She meets another dude. Asian, obviously. Yeah. Uh, he also knows the martial arts. <gasps> they kick ass together. That's insane. We still don't know what the show's about. All we know is that it's titled Kung Fu. Hell yeah. Hell Yeah. Uh, hashtag diversity yeah hashtag stop asian hate yeah i mean like i don't even know what to think of this this feels like one of those things <clears throat> where like we had this in the in the back burner for a while yeah. and now it's too late to yeah. go back yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's like wow but you know what i'm down i'm 100 for this i feel like i feel like this is one of those ideas that like they were they have on the board and they're like mm. but then like the world is in the current movement like we gotta, we gotta push this one forward. We yeah, gotta, we gotta hmm, just like hurry up, push it, it up. Yeah, get it out of there. Let's do it. Let's just cast anybody. Yeah, that shit's ridiculous. Mm. That's hilarious. Mm. Yes, I will expect you to tell me what it is all, all like. <laughs> Listen, I uh, unless we review it for the show, uh, maybe we need to because it airs tonight. Oh my god. <laughs> the other CW show that I think I've talked about before, but the more details have come out. And uh, it's actually the CW I really want to watch. Mm-hmm. The Powerpuff Girls. Is this the live action? Live action Powerpuff Girls. Okay. They've found their professor... What's his X? name? Is, he, is his name Professor no. X? No. No, it's Secret Ingredient X. Is what professor they Utonium? I can't remember. Anyways, do you want to know who it is? Who? Uh, did you watch Scrubs? Uh, I did. I don't remember anybody's names. Okay. Do you remember who the main character was? Professor Utonium. Okay. Do you remember, the, you remember the main character in Scrubs? Yeah. Not him. <gasps> his, best, his best friend. 
Oh, the black guy? Yeah. Wow, you know what? That's just a white erasure. Dude. That's <laughs> fucked up. That's so fucked up. I can't believe that they would do that. So, you know, Blossom's half Chinese? Again. <laughs> white erasure across the board. <laughs> CW, you know. Pushing limits. Pushing limits. You te- know. Testing the emotions of the people. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't know when this is airing. I'm assuming in the fall. I can't wait to watch it. Yeah, this is also another show where I'm like, <laughs> Hit me up. Tell me yeah. what it's all about. Yeah, like, like I can't, I cannot wait to see whatever disaster becomes of this. As much as I loved the Powerpuff Girls when I was younger, yeah, I have like no need or want to go back to anything to deal with the Powerpuff whoa, Girls. Whoa, 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 whoa! Why not though? I just kind of don't care. But you know what? I would care. You know what show? If they brought back, I would be one hundred percent down. Mighty Max. No, the the high high puffy Amy Yumi show. What? You remember that shit that came on after Teen Titans? No. Yeah, there was like a Japanese band that made the Teen Titans theme called uh, High Puffy Amy Yumi. And then they got their own show called the High High Puffy Amy Yumi Show. Yeah, this in is the a... same style. Nah, this is no fun. That's me. what I'm down for. Nah, man. I'd rather have like Street Sharks, Micro Mice from Mars. Listen, also good choices. Not this, you're... whatever you're saying. We don't miss. <laughs> we don't miss is all I'm saying. Um, But yeah. I think that is. I'm gonna it play this shit, picks. and you gotta. You don't remember this? What? You don't. Re- you don't remember the high, high, puffy Amy Yumi show? No, for real. For real. I only watch quality. This is quality. No. It's like a surf rock band. Nope. Nope. You suck. Nope. This is a great. Show. You watch it because of the music? Yeah, probably. Yeah. I was also a kid when this came out. I was like, yo, this music's fucking bumping. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Confession. Teen Titans came out at a time when I was just slowly phasing out of cartoons. This motherfucker. Me and Raven had a. I had such a crush on Raven. Listen, I like Teen Titans, but it, it it was beyond for me. That was it was just past the point where I would like watch it religiously. Like it, but the choices were watch cartoons or go out with friends. Fair enough. Fair yeah. enough. Vince. So. That's what you get for having friends. You miss on quality content. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> if, that was that, if that's what that is, that's what that is. Okay, cool. Let's go into our weeks. Uh, what did you do? What did I do? I oh, God. played more Monster Hunter. Oh, shit, he did. Uh, I am HR7 now. Wow. I can fight high rank Diablos. Is that I, good? This, it's, in the, it's in the HR7 list. I have fought one of the monsters that is apparently one of the forbidden monsters, the ones they don't talk about. Mm. Uh, it's it's basically like one of the end game bosses. How many HRs are there? HRs? I think there's seven. Oh, that's it. But I haven't beat like the urgent for seven. Okay. So I'm still doing all that stuff. So I haven't like beat the game yet. Yeah. Blech. But I have uh, I've seen the HR grind or I've seen the end game grind, and it is talismans, my friend. Uh, it is about get oh you want that you want that like part breaker talisman sure make them 30 percent chance fuck you oh yeah you want that you want that crit boost talisman 10 percent chance grind this shit out and pay for it with materials mm. um it is definitely going to be a grind and i think with this game what i will do is i'll, I'll do what all the fucking twitch streamer pros did and that is farm materials and farm money so that when the expansions do come out and the new shit do, does come out i am loaded and i don't have to grind really anything to to get it well all right then but they have brought back <clears throat> some some fantastic sets like the the fucking butterfly armor set oh, okay from past games the rathalo set is just like yo you want max attack boost get that one Uh, And the thing I've noticed now is it seems like there is a definite theme to each armor set. Like the the Diablo set, that is the Lance set. Oh, that's all about guard. Yeah. Yeah. The, you want the morph thing. It is all about that new mud snake. Alamadron or something? Yeah, with the morph charge and like power prolonger and stuff like that. It seems like they want you to be running full sets. And especially because now if you run five sets you get like all the, the plus three resistance bonuses and stuff yeah. like that right uh so I, I don't know if that helps or deters from customization in the game but it's an interesting choice i don't but I mean it. it used to always be like that this one seems more pronounced than past games 
No, I mean, like... like I, they I, would be like, this is definitely the guard set, but it's not the optimal guard set. Yeah. Where I could be see... Like, I could see, like, someone playing Lance and just being like, this is good enough. Like, this is pretty much optimal. But I think that's what this game is, right? It's trying to get you to understand that, like... I guess it's trying to catch a wider net for newcomers to the series, yeah, right? Yeah, for sure, so, for sure. I'm sure, like, Endgame, Endgame will be more... It'll be way more optimal. Yeah, when we get into G-Rank and all that stuff, it'll be, like, mix and match, motherfucker. Yeah. Um, I'd still definitely want to ban all Longsword users. But they're the best. No, they fucking suck. They always cart. They trip the shit out of me. Flinch-free talismans are hard to get. Hate it. I don't know, man. They look pretty good to me. I've been using the Lance a little bit. That shit's yeah. good. Yeah. Nargakuga weapons. Yeah. Little too powerful. Okay. Little too power. I got white sharpness on my Lance already. I haven't even beat the game. A little crazy. Um, but it's good. Still a good Monster Hunter. Still feels pretty easy. But uh, yeah, I like it. Cool. Like it still. But the really, because it's my last week of school, I've been pretty busy trying to get all set up for the summer so I can graduate in the fall. Yeah and start with my adult life again okay but i have been taking a break and i've been reading a new manga it is called blue period disgusting <laughs> why you say that why you gotta be like that because i know what a period is it's yeah yeah it's a grammatical utility to end a sentence except when you add a color to it blue that's what i'm saying maybe this... i used a blue pen oh, who knows you know what do what you want uh, so, Blue Period is a manga written by Subasa Yamaguchi. I don't really know what else he's done, to be honest. Um, but this has been a long going manga. It started back in mm-hmm. 2017, and there's only nine volumes out, and it's still still going. But it is about a young man, Yatora Yaguchi. He's okay. Who is uh he's he's a delinquent. But here's the thing. Uh oh. There's a twist. He hangs out with delinquents. He's the guy in high school who's friends with everybody. Ah, that's right? good. So he always hangs out with the delinquents because they're like simple as his best friends. But you know, he's kind of just cruising through high school. He thinks of um studying as somewhat of an RPG. Yeah. Like if you put in more time than the other guy to grind, you will get better points. You will get better marks. Checks out. Right? And he's he's actually like a, a top five student. Despite his appearance, mm-hmm. uh, despite his, all of his habits, and you know what, he's just kind of conflicted on what he's going to do after high school. Uh, he gets the he gets the little paper that says like list your top three universities. He leaves it blank, doesn't know what to do. Until one day, uh, he goes to an art club. Uh, one of the people he knows in the school is a, a cross dresser by the name of Ryuji. And he slash she is a part of the club. And one day he goes in to, to see what's going on. And he just decides, he's like, I've been so bored with everything else. I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to enter this art thing for fun. And so what he does is that he draws a, he draws basically the, the skyline of morning Shibuya. Where he went out drinking with all his friends, underage of course. And he thinks that the morning sky of the empty Shibuya crossing is, is just beautiful. So he creates a painting, and for the first time in his life, he, he felt like he was able to truly communicate with someone through art. Yeah. And it just, like, cracked something in his brain. And the whole manga is about starting from zero. He now has a new goal of getting into uh, Tokyo, I think, Gedai University, which is the one of the only public art schools yeah. in the country. And it is his whole journey of becoming an artist. And this isn't like a new concept. Uh, Bakuman did this in ma- manga and anime by letting you go deep into the manga game, telling you what it's what it takes to become a manga artist, like the the background of all the yeah the business ends and stuff like that. What it takes to create a award winning piece. But this one's a little bit more abstract because it is strictly about art. Like they literally use different art concepts to talk about like how you would draw shading, why you would learn this before doing oil paintings and stuff like that. Interesting. And it goes deep, deep, deep into the art game. It's really cool. It was very surprising. I just saw it randomly on a subreddit, on like a manga subreddit. And I was like, this huh. this panel looks cool. So I decided to check it out. Huh. And it turned out to be really good. Interesting. Yeah. And it's it's definitely the most hipster shit I've ever read. Like it is just like, oh, like, 
the the feeling of art is like different for everybody, man. Right? But that's kind of what it is. Right? There's no. A... There's only one best art. <laughs> it's <talking>? called Picasso. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and it's 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 really interesting because they take a character who's all quantitative. Yeah. Right? 100%. He's just like, I know if I do this, I'll get this result. Cool. If I do this math thing, I'll eventually get to this answer. Yeah. And he's trying to change the way he thinks. Um, and he questions himself when he does art as well. So, like, on, he says, honestly, I don't think Picasso's art is good. Right? He thinks that I could probably do it, and he doesn't like it. Right? But he thinks that in his brain, it's like, well, everybody else says he's a fantastic artist. So he must be good. So he has to be good. Maybe I just don't understand it, whatever. And then he meets students at a cram school who are who are like, yeah, I don't really think his art's that good either, right? And it's like, art isn't about like who's the best, what's the best. It's about like putting your soul on the paper and making someone like communicate, like he did with his original drawing, communicating with someone through the form of pictures, through the form of an image, hmm. right? And that could come from any different medium yeah so he decides to like go into oil painting but they also go into like uh illustrations and right character design and stuff yeah. like that yeah. and it's it's awesome it just hooked me from the beginning so really long chapters check it out i think there's american releases of it um in manga like you buy the manga and stuff i don't know if it's available on any sort of like streaming service okay. like the shonen jump app or something like that but it is, it's fantastic. It's super, super good. Nito, bandito. Highly recommend it. And that's really been my week. Wow. Look at you. What? Doing nothing. I'm doing school. You want me to talk about homework? No. Yo, look, I just wrote a paper on postmodernism again for the fifth time because every one of my classes overlaps. Like, <laughs> you're clearly not doing it good enough then. <laughs> just copy and paste that shit. Yeah. What are they going to say? You player jars? What? Yourself? Come on. That's actually a thing. Oh, really? So I just learned about that. So I have a, a paper that I just finished. It was like ten, it was like ten pages, where it was about the news deserts where like local news is dying and whatever. But I have another class that has a topic that's very similar. Mm -hmm. And I was like, can I just submit the same paper? And then I looked it up because I didn't want to risk it. And there's such thing as self plagiarism. Damn. Like in in academia, like. You, even though the topic could be exactly the same, you handing in the same paper into two classes is academic misconduct. I used to call that efficiency. Yeah, I, that's what I say too, man. <laughs> like, what the fuck? But they expect you to be handing in original work for each It class is original that. work. Yeah, but it's not truly original because you already used it. Just change the order of the paragraphs. <laughs> so, yeah. Also, I don't think you can get away with that. They got like turn it in now. You know what you should like do? That. You should just write it in a different perspective. Like write the first of your, your paper, just all first person. Oh, true. Yeah, and then write the second one, just all third person. Yeah, you could do that. That's yeah. true. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um. So it, that's yeah, that was some bullshit when I read that. I was like, "Fuck you!" I was trying to save <laughs> save some time here. This shit's. I'm busy doing this shit. Yeah, Come man. on. Come on. So yeah, that was some bullshit. But I mean, school's so bullshit like that. Yeah. Because it's like yeah. You know, you know what happens when we have contracts? We just copy and paste the same shit to everybody Hell, else. Yo, you know what coders do? <laughs> yeah. They go to public libraries of code and copy and paste that shit yeah, because like, it already works. School's so crazy sometimes. Yeah. Academia in general is yeah, a little like, crazy the more I'm there. Because it's like the real world does not operate under the rules of academia. Yeah. Like never. 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 That whole concept of I have five classes and we have one week to do all the tests, yeah. that never happens in the real world. I've never heard of someone, like a place where you've had five deadlines all in the span of like three days of one another. Yeah. Does not work like that. Yeah. Right? The world never ha works like that. Or I've never like been on the job and yeah. someone's like, do this job, but also don't look anything up. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So when I'm when I'm doing everything online, all of my tests have been like open book. Yeah. And I'm like, this is closer to the real world. Yeah. And the te the tests are technically harder because yeah. it's all open book. But I'm like, yeah, I'm not a fucking rote memorization machine. Yeah. Right. And on the job, I won't have to do that unless I'm like a doctor. Yeah. School, right. Schools are wild. Schools are crazy. Yeah. Especially now being in university, like college is one thing. Yeah. But like university, like in certain cases, is just so fucking elitist. It's insane. Yeah. Just. 
all the who like i wanted to just interview like some people for one of my projects but they're like no you got to go through like an ethics board and all this shit and i'm like it's like to ask a question come on <laughs> like yeah man uh it's like i'm sure there's reasons and they make reasons for it i don't agree with the reasons most of the time but well, that's on you that's on me i guess so yeah i don't know fucking i got this summer and i'm done unless i can't find a job then maybe i'll do fourth year oh man oh man we'll see how it goes we'll all see, right we'll see how this covid thing all right works out. all right all right uh let's see my week i played monster hunter okay i did that one one mission like i told you called special license test three yeah Hunt as an ogre, hunt a Rathalos, and then Alamadron. Yes. Good quest. Now, Classic uh, quest. Now I got my urgent to do high rank, and I haven't played it since. This motherfucker. I'm not gonna lie, like the game's pretty. The game's good. I just I don't know why. It's not. It's not sunk its teeth into me. Like I have. I don't have that bug where I'm like, I wanna grind it out. I'll tell you why. Why? I know why. Why? You've sullied yourself with by playing other games like overcooked <laughs> you're you're heading more towards the casual section of the gamers i area. am and I, I don't like it man i don't like it i am listen what you got to do is you got to get your girlfriend on this monster hunter grind no hell yeah no. she's a fourth we need a fourth no no we have a fourth who mikey he's never playing this game come on he bought it yeah he so what he bought the last ones too <laughs> i don't know i just uh he bought the Star Wars MMO before that. Yeah, I don't know. This this Monster Hunter, I don't know. It's a song about it. It's just like... Oh, shit. It's not doing it for me. That blue period is apparently getting an anime this year. Oh, that's good. Oh, nice. But yeah, so uh, that was my Monster Hunter experience this week. So it was I. Uh, I went back to catch up on anime that I had to complete from the winter season. Okay. Finished up Horimiya. Oh, nice. How wholesome is oh, it? Oh, so wholesome. There is one character that, like, I... Come, kind of comes out of nowhere and i'm like man i really dislike you and your type of person and your personality type you hate my personality type no, 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 no <laughs> absolutely you just look me in the eye and like, i really hate your i'm like whoa was that a shot no no no, 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 no. <laughs> there's a there's a character that that kind of shows up is not... it the super genki friend who there's a i i'm in the manga i'm on at a portion where what's her name it's a dude it's a dude yeah oh no okay all right no no it's not that one it's someone else is it the bitch who's like just throw the things in the garbage. No, oh, I hate no, no. that girl. She sucks. She's fine. She she's... sucks. No, she's fine. Cut her pigtails off. Get yeah, out of she's here. fine. She's honestly fine. <sighs> it's the it's another girl. I'm just like, fuck you. All right. Yeah. She's trying to throw a wrench into the situation. No, she's not. She's just like, I don't know how to describe it, but like, it's the type of character like she's self aware that she's bad. Okay. But she's still gonna make the same bad selfish decisions. All right. And it's like, get the fuck out of here. But, I don't know. Sometimes life be like that. Sometimes it be like that, bro. And sometimes people fall in love with those kind of people and you're like, well, you're free to make your own mistakes. Uh-oh. Yeah. So, Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And maybe it's not that bad, but like that's how I see it. So that was all right. Um, And then I watched, I finished up Formula 1 Drive to Survive. That's really great. Mm-hmm. It's a good, uh, good show. Like I predicted... They do not have enough episodes to cover the drama of all of last season. So, but it's a it's a good primer for this season. Um, and then I tried to check out some of the currently airing anime. Yeah, and I only watched one. Shaman King. No, I forgot. Oh what? To. Oh my I god! To. Absolute I disgust. Forgot to. I watched S S S S Dynazenon. I love that. I just love saying Dynazenon. It's a good <laughs> word. Yeah. Um if you liked S S S S Gridman, I really like that show. You'll probably like this show. Fuck. I will say the first episode, I have to rewatch Gridman again because I can't remember if the first episode was slow or not. But the first episode here I felt like it was a little bit slow and kind of weird and uh, all over the place. It was. I, I remember that. Okay, so then like... But like the end of episode one of Gridman was like, oh shit. Like it went from zero to like... Yeah, weird. so the end of that, this episode was like, like the robot's there. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, oh shit, we're going into it. And then... <laughs> oh shit, we back, we're going back again. And there's mystery and they have characters like, oh man, you're so cool. But like, who are you? Right. And uh, so, dig it. I'm going to follow this one. Yeah, I, I got to watch Shaman King. I think uh, The World Ends With You airs tomorrow. 
Okay. So I want to check that out. Yeah, one day, 14 hours left. Oh, well, you're, you're on, on that the, website. I'm on that Andy chart, baby. Okay, okay, okay. I still want to f- watch the fucking Roman fighting anime. <laughs> oh, like the Gladiator one? Yeah, Sestvus, the Roman fighter. Sestvus. Yeah, there's a couple on there that I feel like I need to check out. Yeah, you, you know what you got really got to check out? Card Fight Vanguard Overdress. Well, shit. <laughs> shit, I got to catch up on Attack on Titan as well. Oh, I got to catch up on Thunderbolt Fan. You want to watch Thunderbolt Fantasy? No. You want to have an anime club and watch Thunderbolt Fantasy? You can. Let's watch Thunderbolt Fantasy. It's you pretty, can. It's pretty good. I know it's good. I've seen it. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> right. Oh, shit. New Yokai watch today. Oh, my. Yeah. Hell, yeah. Um, but, yeah. Uh, and then I've just been playing, like, um, games here and there. There's a new Overwatch event. Stop playing that game. It's Nobody not, plays that game. I uninstalled it. Nobody plays that game anymore. I still enjoy that game so much. Oh, my God. And now it's got support for NVIDIA Reflex boosted frames <gasps> 30 more frames all right and latency markers okay god it's good um yeah shaking my head uh bu- 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 otherwise i haven't actually had a lot of time to be inside to do stuff because like i spent we had we have nice weather now so yeah and it was long weekend so i've been, been out a lot actually so okay. it's just a lot of hiking and like a lot of just being outside and, and active and uh I've tried doubling my workout for the past two weeks, and so if I'm not doing that, I'm sleeping. Doubling your workout? That's the problem, because uh, you're too tired to do anything else. It is. I, I at, at, at night, I'm like, do I want to play games and think? Or do I want to, like, veg out and watch anime? You know what I heard? I heard that um, working out in the morning is not as efficient as working out in the afternoon in terms of, like, It depends what you fat. want. It depends what you want to do. Yeah. I was reading this thing where, like, also if you so like if you work in the morning, you usually have like a ten percent body fat, like, like efficiency reduction or something. Mm-hmm. But if you work out in the afternoon, it's thirteen. But if you have caffeine in the morning and then go work out, it becomes like the morning reduction efficiency becomes thirteen percent. Yeah, and then even more so in the afternoon. Yeah, so like, yeah, it depends what you do and what you want to do. So what right? I'm saying is, only work out in the afternoon. No, no, no. <laughs> or work out at night. No, I figured like I got a double. I gotta double it up. No. Yeah, man. No. I gotta double it up. And it's I'm been just, tiring. This is less time for video games. I'm disappointed. It's been so tiring. You know what you should do? What? When you go biking. What? Just put on like a weight suit. No. Yeah. No. And then bike with extra weight. So when you go up a hill, it's extra hard. No. No. Just make your, yeah, make your one workout two times as intense. No. And then it's the same thing. No, or I just double the length. No, that's it's too much time. It's not efficient. What are you talking about? You think that You're I can... You're the efficiency man. You think that I can complete the same workout with twice the amount of weight at yes. the same time? Hell no. Yeah. Hell yeah. No. I believe in you. It would be half. I believe that much in you. Nah, It'd don't. be half the time? See, even faster. No, 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 no. It'd be double. Listen, I believe the you that believes in yourself. I, I, I don't believe the you that believes in me. But it doesn't matter because I do. I don't care. So just do it so you can play more video games. I don't. No, no, no. And there's no video games to play. I'm out of video games. It's called Monster Hunter. I, I listen. I own a lot of video games. I can give you some video games. I still think Monster Hunter doesn't look that great. I can't look at. it. I can't stand <laughs> looking at that game. <laughs> I put it Monster Hunter World. I put it on performance mode. I'm like, oh my god, game looks like dog shit. That's the thing about World. So like, we played four players. Yeah. That is the like that game is running at its max. Like it is trying to hold itself it's together. It's going for it, yeah. Yeah, like there are dips in frame rate. And I don't know if it's just me feeling it, but like do you find the controls in Monster Hunters, especially in multiplayer, like there's definitely latency in inputs? I don't know if I would say latency, but I would feel I feel that not compared- latency, but like there's no like I feel like compared to Rise, the animations on button presses are much more deliberate. Uh, I don't even mean that. I mean, like, I'm pressing A, nothing's happening. Yeah, I, I don't know. Like, when I'm trying to call the dog, and, like... You gotta watch out, though. Usually, your dog is doing some dumbass shit, like attacking small monsters or on fire, and then it just won't come. But sometimes, like, I'll, I'll press the... Like, I couldn't tell if it was, like, my Joy-Cons, because I went through all my Joy-Cons, and then yeah. I went through my Pro Control, and I'm like, no, it's the same thing, like... I don't know if it's because, like, when um, coming off of World, World just felt nicer or, like, just felt more responsive. But, like, on the Switch, the Switch controls, like, they're fine. It's just they don't feel as Oh, I have the opposite tight. thing. I think the Switch controls are more responsive than World. 
I think the the difference is the world has much smoother animations. So maybe it, it if this one you kind of are getting like the devil may cry. I'm cutting the animation mid animation, so I can do yeah. Another so animation. like yeah, you could time it better, yeah. but like in in world it's more smooth to get. So it's harder to tell, but I can see that. Yeah, but like my some of my button inputs just don't come to me as nicely as I'd want them to. Mm-hmm. Maybe maybe it's just a, a growing pain. I don't know. I'll get to it more. I mean, I've been trying some cool stuff with this ain't overcooked play. son this is a hardcore gaming game oh, it's overcooked a hardcore game <laughs> yeah i don't know what you, i don't want to tell you man <laughs> i've seen i've seen a top tier overcooked that's just wild yeah uh but otherwise yeah that was it for my week um i'll check out some stuff we'll mm-hmm. see what happens i think that's it for us yeah happy you know, april for some reason i got really fucking hungry again okay did you eat today i had fish and potatoes for lunch and I ate samosas. Okay. I did take. Listen, the coffee ran through me. I'll oh, say that. Oh. I would, oh, it cleared you. The coffee went for it. Ah, I see. So maybe that was it. Good. All right. Cool. Well, thanks. On that uh, bombshell, let's end it. <laughs> <laughs>